IndyCar fans, you might have heard the name Lena Gade. If you are a sports car fan, if you have seen the Truth in 24 documentary, you'll know that Lena definitely established herself as one of the world's preeminent race engineers. I'm trying to make you blush here. Uh, we are fortunate to have her in IndyCar, so I figured you might have heard Lena's name. She's with the Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports team, but you might have heard her name, but you need to hear from Lena herself. Tell me about this decision. I mean, you've made a great name and career for yourself in Europe. I'm guessing you probably could have stayed in sports cars doing something with someone. You chose this crazy American discipline. We're here on an oval at Phoenix. Uh, how are you feeling about that decision? Um, I'm really enjoying the whole thing. Um, yes, it probably was um, maybe the obvious choice um, to go back to doing some kind of sports car racing from Bentley. Um, but it uh, it wasn't something that materialized. I would kind of thought about doing DPI and I wanted to, to do something in DPI for this year. But those choices were very limited and not the ones I wanted. Mm. So I also looked to, again to go back into the WEC. But there was a bit of a feeling of been there, done that kind of ticked all the boxes not to say that there's not more to achieve because there always is in this sure, sport sure. you always learn sure. stuff um, but in the end this was an obvious choice my bucket list has got Indy 500 on it and it has See. also got um, living in the States as well so I'm ticking both of those off my bucket list right now two other reasons we love Lena <laughs> so you have had a, a great relationship with Pierce Phillips general manager yeah. here at Schmidt Peterson what were the conversations like uh, discussing with him it's not as if you just turned up uh, I know mm -hmm. you two had been discussing this for a while what did he tell you about this challenge that made you say okay I want to do this so as you say I've known Piers for quite some time we were both race he's engineers old. he's very old <laughs> I'm not that far off of him um, I'd met him back in 2010 when we were both race engineering for a touring car team and we kept in touch um, all the time that I was at Le Mans um, the Stracker guys were either next door and I used to run in there for cups of tea to mm. go and meet some English people when I was surrounded by the Germans and that kind that's of thing. a fairly normal thing at Le Mans yep um, and we, we spoke actually when uh, Piers first came across to the US. Mm. Back at the end of sort of 2015, he told me a little bit about what he was doing and it was quite different to what he had done in the past. And we kept in touch. Back in 2016, he, uh, I guess a bit opportunistically, called me up and asked, um, as he knew I was leaving Audi, if I wanted to run his third car at the Indy 500. Wow. And I was a bit, whoa. <laughs> can't I'm still with Audi so I've got to I've got to kind of carry on but as we kept in touch I did visit him last year after the New York Formula E race back in July he showed me around the workshop I was a bit like this looks cool this looks like something I want to do wow. and our conversations kind of carried on from July onwards um, at that time not necessarily for a role but having learned a little bit more about it and having made a decision that I wanted to get back to being at the racetrack um, the job at Bentley was great but it wasn't for me sitting at a desk and um, I wasn't always at a desk but I was kind of moving around from one job to the next I really wanted to be back with a with a race team and, brilliant and uh, kind of pushing the limits of what I know and what I don't know and I can 100% say I'm not underestimating the challenge that IndyCar has to offer, but ovals, yeah, it's going to be something different. You like challenges, apparently. Yep. All right, so this is going to be a great learning year for you. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that questions whether you're going to be able to pick this up like you have everything else. The last question I have for you, though. So when I first met you at Le Mans years ago, Alan McNish, Dindo Capello, Tom Christensen, a bunch of great and crazy personalities. Did Pierce say you'd be working with James Hinchcliffe? Because if you willfully signed up for that, we do need to talk because that is concerning. That is a crazy personality. So I know James from back in his A1 GP days okay. because he was good friends with Khalil Bashir, mm. who was the, one of the drivers at Team Lebanon, who is, which is the team that I was with. So I'd met him a couple of times. And, um, and still chose to came well, he come seemed over. Like, an, like a nice enough normal young man. Um, that's maybe a, a sweeping statement for many race drivers when you first meet them and then you get to know them properly. Uh, he's hilarious. Um, and it's brilliant to work with someone like that. Very much, um, it breaks down all the barriers. Yeah. It, it puts everything on a level playing field. He's not afraid to ask questions. I'm certainly not afraid to tell, tell people when I don't know something and I need to get some information. And he's been great. So... Yeah, I, I like him. I think he's brilliant. All right. <laughs> well, again, we're uh, we're excited to have you here, and to I'm be able to bring to uh, you know top tier sports car experience to what we're doing here is phenomenal. And uh, yeah, 
awesome. Glad to have you, and Thank it'll you. be fun to see how this uh, evolution of playing uh, IndyCar and ovals uh, pans out for you. Yeah, so. thank you very much. I'm really, really looking forward to this season.